Well, um, your question is, what's my educational vision? And uh, I would succinctly say it's the belief that we have the world we have because we have the education we have. In other words, we have a very problematic world. We have a world in crisis. Mm -hmm. And I think the s people look at the symptoms and they don't look so much at the root of these problems, which is the human consciousness. And uh, nothing is more determining in the quality of human consciousness than the process of compulsory education. It's um, increasingly dehumanizing situation that not only does not do its job of educating in the true sense of the word, which is helping human development, individual and social, but it stands in the way, creates many emotional problems. It's almost as I remember a a small boy saying in an book, Italian book I read, something devilish. It's perceived by students as something intrinsically bad. I think objectively it is. It takes children away from their families, it takes away from uh, all other opportunities of learning. Um, of course, there wouldn't be easily a f place for them unless in the new alternative system. Now in America they are building uh, what are called uh, learning communities, which are neighborhood sponsored. And they have a place for sports, a place for computers, a place for socializing. These learning centers are not governed by uh, the standard authorities. And some st American states permit education parent-guided, parent-assisted education at home. And actually, the basic idea is not parent-assisted. Essentially, the kids are doing their own. They are using the Internet with very great ability. They're finding many resources to learn. And they can pass the exams much more easily at their own rhythm and satisfy other interests as well when they can tailor their own education to their own needs. So I think um, education is um, very much part of the political and an econo an economic aspects of society. Eisenhower coined this word the military-industrial complex. I think education is an ally of the military-industrial complex. And we think of the military and the industrial as problems, as the oppressors. But we don't think of education as the vital piece that makes people ready to go into that system. The robotization system, it's not education, it's a, a way of putting people asleep, of killing their creativity, of making them more and more passive and more open to authority and conformity. So I think um, it's bad business to educate for for the workforce uh, and not heed, not put attention to educating for life. Otherwise, life can take revenge on us. I think for a viable society, we need I individual human beings that have a better emotional health than the, the product of today's education. It's, it's a matter of survival that we pay attention not only to reading, writing, and arithmetic, but to true culture, which is cultivation, uh, growth, uh, f to the mind. Just like in uh, the New Testament, uh, Jesus says, uh, Heed the kingdom before ev everything else, and everything else will fall into place. Everything will take care of itself if you give priority to the kingdom of God that is in our hearts. So in the same way we can say if you pay attention to the mind, 
to the depth of consciousness, many things will fall into place. It's a, the best inversion we can do for a collective predicament. And um, can it be done? I think it can be done because I have a way of doing it. Edgar Morin was appointed by the French government, was put in charge of reforming French education, and after two years had to give up. The institution was too refractory to change. But he was working from concepts. He was an intellectual, even though a very open-minded, the father of complexity science. But what he had to offer is curriculum design, mostly. What I have to offer is a deep impact on the mind of teachers. So these teachers become more humanized. And a person who is more human is immediately more a uh, channel for the expression of values. We need people to be, have an ability of solidarity. We need people to have a capacity to relate an interest in others. We need people to have an ability to enjoy. We need teachers to be truly concerned with the happiness of students. That's almost outside the culture of education. The, the, the education bureaucracy has structured things in so that other certain things are irrelevant. Happiness is irrelevant. So I have a way of working with teachers to give teachers that sufficiently deep experience of transformation that makes them into teachers of a different degree, let's say. Not only people who know their subject matter. And um, it's a long experience. I've been experimenting with groups in some 40 years. I cannot say that I am pre presenting hypotheses or abstract proposals. I have something that works, that works year after year with thousands of people have gone through it. And practically everything, everybody who has gone through Sat says, my life was before Sat and after Sat. Uh, I don't know that there is anything so efficient in making a dent in a person's attitude to life, giving a people an orientation of, like a North Pole, what's the direction of growth and what's the direction, what needs to be left behind, what's obsolete. The people are more lucid after this. And they can uh, also convey some of this. It's uh, very brief. It's a five-day introduction to any type psychology. That's the door to that. Then uh, the first year, it's 10 days. The next uh, module is 10 days. It contains the Buddhist meditation and Enneagram-related uh, work uh, and on personality insight and um, improving of cleaning relationships. Uh, it contains um, a brand of therapeutic drama that emerged in Sat. It's a kind of emerging culture that gets enriched little by little with the contributions of different collaborators who come from the area of theater and do Sat and then different um, different com synthesis uh, emerges between the theatric, the drama experience and Gestalt and the Enneagram. And there is a, a way of teaching people to become therapists, which is, a, I call it this therapy laboratory that I have developed, which I think is a very original and also like a process where people go directly to what they need to practice and confront, authentic movement, and so forth. The, the, the blueprint is the fourth way blueprint, the, the Gurdjieff inheritance, which is the belief in working simultaneously in the world of action, the world of feeling, in the world of thought, thought and then the fourth level, which is awareness in itself, the training of awareness. Mostly, in, I do that in Buddhist meditation, which is not just awareness to see what is happening in the here and now, but 
awareness that can aspire to knowing itself, to know the deeper self. So this um, it's a very full, uh, and it would seem too ambitious to do in a short time, but in fact it's a dynamite cocktail, because it's very well done. So people come out jubilant. <laughs> so. I started doing it with seekers, I went on with professionals of therapy, now I'm doing it with educators. I think that my greater challenge is ahead, doing with, with the politicians of education, doing with it with education administrators. I've had one group of that kind in Brazil, and it has been the most difficult group in my whole life. I never met a group that so much behaved like small children in a classroom, not interested in what I was presenting, arrogantly thinking they knew it all beforehand, not interested in developing themselves or serving their purpose, only interested in promotion, in coming so it would be noticed that they volunteered, getting an extra dot to get an extra point in the curriculum. Very difficult. I think there's a rotten layer uh, of people that are more in need of this at the top of the chain of decisions in education. And that's an experience I have little of right now. But I think it can be handled if we put together administrators with teachers who are in the classroom and with parents because parents have to be brought in and working with parents and the community is a vital part of any teacher that understands his or her job. <laughs>